Hey guys, today I want to share with you some tips for grooming an American Cocker Spaniel. The Cocker Spaniel is a flat-coated breed and looks its best when the coat is properly maintained. Let me start by saying that this form of grooming is usually started from the very first haircut. As clipping of the coat on the dog's back may cause damage to the coat growth pattern. Once the damage is done, it can be impossible to bring it back to its original cycle of growth, meaning that this coat is designed to rotate with a balance of guard hair and undercoat. For many coats, once clipped, the balance is permanently interrupted. There may be factors that can affect whether a flat-coated breed will have a nicely rotating flat coat or not. These include genetics, hormonal changes such as spaying and neutering, thyroid issues, and such. Unneutered males usually have the best coats. You can see as I'm washing thicket that I'm keeping the coat lying flat by rubbing with the lay of the coat. When I apply products, I spread it over the coat, keeping this in mind. When I apply products to the long coat, I simply squeeze it into the hair. Rinse two to three times longer than you think you need to. Use the same method when towel drying the coat, making sure not to push the coat against the grain, squeezing the water out of the long hair areas. Contrary to common belief, cockers need not be susceptible to ear and skin infections. I have owned three, and not only my three, but also the largest percent of my cocker clients never had these issues. I believe that it's due to proper coat and skin maintenance. After the bath, I applied Vetoquinol ear cleansing solution, then wiped out each ear with cotton. As you can see, they are clean and healthy. I usually lay a couple of thick cotton bath mats under the dog and wrap them in a dry towel after the bulk of water has been squeezed off. I keep a towel draped over the back as I dry the crown because the dryer will blow the coat up and create a cowlicked area. I always dry the crown and neck first as it is very important to me that these areas are encouraged to lie in the direction that I want them to. I prefer a Mason Pearson brush for this work. I train my cockers to lie on their sides for the blow dry of the long hair. I use a medium firm pin brush with longer pins for brushing. Once the dog is dry, I completely comb the coat, then wrap the ears in vet wrap to keep them out of the dog's mouth. There are a great many carding tools out there. I have a Jody Murphy carding knife, an Artero Super Blade, and a diamond stone type of tool. These are a necessity for keeping a flat coat. While holding the skin taut, lightly drag the carding tool through the coat at a 45 degree angle. Remove any loose shedding undercoat. Mm -hmm. 
A pumice stone also works well for removing additional loose coat. You want to be careful to leave a fill of hair in front of the tail and in the dip behind the shoulder blades. This will help the dog to have the appearance of a beautiful top line. So as you card out the coat, go around these areas, taking some areas short and tight while leaving others long, shaping the coat to give the image of a flat back, an arched neck, and tighter on the thighs and shoulders. I take the coat tight right on the flat of the back and then fill in the dip in front of the tail, then tight on the sides of the tail. I card either side of the area beside the tail to show off the rear angles of the dog. I also lightly card, stone, and strip the crown, removing loose coat. Make sure to get those thighs tight. Moving on to the clipper work. Using a seven blade, I clipper the underside of the tail. Clipping down the neck with a seven blade, I stop about a finger and a half above the bone on the chest. I clip her from the back corner of the ear down to just above the shoulder blade to create a nice lean neck. On top of the head, you should leave a crown. I imagine a circle shape across the skull. I imagine this line starting at the front of the ear and rounding back towards the back of the skull. Clip this area with a 7F blade, slightly dipping in past the skull to accentuate the arch of the neck. Clean out the chiseling below the eyes and on top of the muzzle with a tin blade. Clip the cheeks flat from the corner of the eye to the ear. Next, clip the muzzle with a 7F blade. This will cause the muzzle to look very plush and full.
clean out the grooves in the lip area. It is important to keep this area clean and dry. Using a tin blade, clipper the very front of the muzzle. Clipping the ears, use a tin blade inside and out, down to where the skin no longer folds backwards. This is almost always in direct line with the jaw. The top of the ear should always be in line with the eye. Make a slight V in the outside center of the ear to encourage the ear to lie flat against the head and to lighten the weight of the ear. Don't forget to scissor the edges of the ear for a neat, clean appearance. This is how to help that crown area lie down. Using a 46 tooth blending shear, start skimming and blending the longer hair into the clipped areas until you have a dome shaped head with a soft expression. Using the same technique, blend the stripped coat into the clipped area on the neck. The goal is a natural transition. Using the same blending shears, blend the stripped area on the tail into the clipped underside, tapering the tail towards the tip. Thin off the hair just under the tail to create a shelf, rear angles, and angulation. to set your bevels before trimming the feet. I like to use chunkers for this purpose with a very light touch, just lightly setting a line. Be sure to match all four feet. Next, scissor the feet large and round.
making a big circle, line the scissors flat at first, then start to angle up into the beveled line. After clipping the pads, trim off any hair that falls below the pads. I set the back legs at the edge of the table to make it easier to set the hocks. Creating a nice angle in the hock area is important. I usually turn my curved shears backwards and go from the back pad up towards the hock in this area. Check over the dog and make sure everything is blended and the bevels match. Neaten the ears and set the underlying rising to the center of the dog. And now we're finished. If your dog is messy, you can braid the hair on each side under the tail. 
but this should be brushed out and redone daily. Thanks guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and tap the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads or live streams. See you next time guys. Bye.